oxygen and then it's going to make its way back into these two little tubes right there and those are called pulmonary veins because veins carry blood to the heart arteries carry blood away from the heart and I remember that let me just put a note here arteries away they both begin with A's and then veins are going to the heart So they're going to come back in here. They've gone to the lungs. Are they oxygenated or deoxygenated? They are oxygenated. They have gone and picked up oxygen and dropped off the carbon dioxide and we've exhaled and let that go out. So now the blood is oxygenated. I'm going to color both sides of these so that both of these veins are red. <clears throat> okay, and it's going to come into this chamber right here this is a top chamber of the heart and the top chambers are called atriums both of these are called atriums the top chambers and so the top one this one is this going to be left or right this one is going to be called the left because we're looking at the mirror image of a person or looking at someone so this is the left atrium. By the way, this is coming in through the, we call these the pulmonary vein. Then here's another one of those gates that it's got to come into. So the blood's coming in from this lung and this lung, and it's gonna go down through the gate in this direction. It's gotta go through that one-way gate. We call this one, this valve right here, that one-way gate, we call that the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. Let's call that mitral, M-I-T-R-A-L. And another name we call it bicuspid. Why do you think we call it bicuspid? How many flaps do you think it has on it? Two is correct. And this blood is oxygenated, so we're gonna have this chamber filled with oxygenated blood. Now as you look at this muscle part, this is the the muscle part. We looked at those in, uh, I brought a piece of uh, heart in and we tried to squeeze it and mash it. We found out that the cardiac muscle is some of the toughest muscle in the body. It has lots of mitochondria in it because it's got to work 24 seven. And it's so tough that we could smash it with our fingers and we could not make a dent in it. We could not uh, break the tissue because it's so tough and notice how this side over here is a lot thinner than this side is right here where did this side have to pump the blood to this ventricle this is the right ventricle where did this right ventricle have to pump the blood to right ventricle it had to only pump it to the lungs that's not very far away from it so it doesn't have to have a really strong muscle to get it to the lungs. But over here, this muscle here is very thick. This is the strongest chamber of the uh, body. This is the left ventricle. It's very strong and this one has to be that way because where does this one have to pump the blood to? The whole body. So it squeezes that blood and the blood is gonna go into here and then it's gonna go through this other little gate right here. This little gate is called the aortic valve. Aortic valve because this branch right up here is called the aorta. This uh, aorta is about an inch across. It is the largest 
a vessel in our body. It is filled with blood that's pumping every beat. A, a big uh, portion of blood goes and fills us so that it can pump to every part of our body. So these three little branches right here carry it to the head and the two arms. But notice how this branch is also going down behind the heart. It's going around behind the heart. Keep going, keep going. It's going to go all the way down behind the heart. Don't just think this comes out of it. It's coming around behind the heart here. And this is the aorta. The blood is flowing from the left ventricle. And this big pump right here is squeezing it through the little valve here called the mitral valve and it's going through the aorta it'll go out through here through there there coming on around behind the heart and then out to the uh, lower part of the body to the lower body so We've got one valve that I did not label, and or I didn't, well, actually two, I didn't label these two valves. So this valve right here, this one that this is going through, notice where it's heading to. It's heading to the lungs. It's heading to the pulmonary artery. So we call this one the pulmonary valve. So right there, that's called the pulmonary valve. This one right here, we notice that it's going to the aorta. So we call that one, this one right here, is called the aortic valve. Aortic valve. Okay, let's just do a quick review. So from the upper body, all the blood that has given up its oxygen to help the cells to be able to burn glucose so that we can get the energy out of it, it has to be brought back into the heart so that it can go and get rid of the carbon dioxide and then get oxygen at the lungs. So from the upper body it goes in superior, from the lower body it comes in through the inferior vena cavus. They go into this chamber, this cave, this cavern right here, and then they go from the right atrium through this valve called the tricuspid valve, this little gate, and then it goes from the right ventricle. It's got to go get rid of that carbon dioxide and go pick up oxygen. So it's going through the pul pulmonary valve here to the pulmonary arteries out, going out to the lungs, coming back in through the pulmonary veins, you can put an S there, pulmonary veins, veins bring blood to the heart, and they're coming in through these little openings right here, the left atrium. They go through this two flap valve, which is now called a bicuspid, or you can say mitral, that's what the doctor would say is a mitral valve. And then it goes into this left chamber, the strongest chamber of the heart, the left ventricle. It leaves the left ventricle and goes now to the whole body through the aortic branch, this large vessel right here. So this one is very big and very filled with blood. If something happens to this aorta and it um, gets a hole in it, for example, maybe they have a an aneurysm and that would be where a part would bubble out on here. And if that aneurysm burst, then the person would probably have less than a minute to live because this is carrying so much blood that that couldn't get stopped in time, even if you were in the hospital. Now, there's one thing I haven't told you about. And this little separation right here between the two ventricles that separates the deoxygenated blood from the oxygenated blood, this is called the septum. Let's just label that S E. P-T-U-M. 
A septum is a divider. You have one in your nose that separate the nostrils. So that's a septum. Sometimes you hear the, somebody has a deviated septum. But if you feel of your nose, that part that divides each nostril is a septum. It's a division part. So this is the septum or a division part between the two sides of the heart. Um, sometimes a person's born and they might have a hole in their heart. Sometimes what is happening is there might be a hole in this septum and it lets this deoxygenated blood fill with this oxygenated blood. And so the person is not getting fully oxygenated blood back to their body. They're getting deoxygenated blood too. And so they end up not having very much energy because they're not getting the oxygen. Maybe they have learning disabilities because their brain is not being fed with enough oxygen. So when you hear of a hole in the heart, it's sometimes in between the 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 right and left ventricles here in this septum area. Sometimes you'll hear of people having um, valve problems where their valves are not closing completely. So whenever the this valve is opening and closing, some of it's swishing backwards into the chamber before it, or maybe it's here and it swishes back into this chamber. So it's not completely leaving the chamber. And that ends up, um, the doctor can tell that because whenever you're, he's listening to your heart, he's listening for a clear lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. But if he hears like lub swish dub, lub swish dub, or lub dub swish, lub dub swish, then he knows that swish sound that he's hearing means that this flap is letting some of the blood flow backwards and it's not um, completely clearing out that chamber at that time. It's letting it come back. So sometimes they have to replace those valves. They use either pig um, uh, valves from pig's hearts or they may use an artificial valve now and repair those with it. So that is something that's very dangerous for people, uh, holes in their heart. Sometimes they heal themselves, sometimes they don't, and the doctor has to do surgery to close them up. So those are a couple of the problems that can happen. Um, if you um, will label these and study the pattern of how this is going through the heart, that'll help you to memorize and understand how this is related to the respiratory system because it has to go to the lungs to drop off carbon dioxide, has to come back in with fresh oxygen to get it to all parts of the body because the body needs that for cellular respiration in order to burn the glucose and get the energy out of it to make ATP so the mitochondria can have energy for the cell. Um, we will go over this more thoroughly in class and practice it with a very large heart that I have that we'll walk through and I hope that you go ahead and get your things colored and labeled and that will help you get a, a little jump start on practicing this.